So, Lucas, uh, what do you think about my uh, my clandestine activities that I've got planned for the rest of the week? Clandestine call. Throwing That's around, what I'm calling it. I think I'm quite big old words here. Yeah, I think I'm being quite sneaky, right? I mean, a little bit, think, a little bit. I think yeah. it'll work. Um, I mean, I can't see why it wouldn't work, but Carl, what are you like sneaking about to do? Okay, so for the past like month and a half, my landlord of the place I used to live before I bought this place has just been stonewalling me in regards to getting my deposit back. Mm -hmm. And it's been a nightmare because every time I've tried to ask them, hey, can I get my deposit back? No answer. Can I get my deposit back? No answer. Escalate it to the Deposit Protection Service, who is like this thing in the UK where your deposit's held by them. If it's not returned, you have to contact them. They then contact the landlord on my behalf. Landlord's like, okay, I want 950 quid off you. It's like, how about now? Mm-hmm. And in response for this £950 my deposit, they're like, okay, so you need like 300 quid for cleaning, £400 for damages, then £200 for moving furniture. Spoilers, this all bullshit. So I've asked my landlady for the past two weeks, hey, can you provide any evidence or receipts for the stuff that you've done? Only contact me through the Deposit Protection Service. But every time I contact them, it's like, we've not heard from them yet, but they've got up to two months to reply. Which is great. It's nice that just I can be left without you know, a month's rent for upwards of four or five months. Mm -hmm. That's how long it might take if they drag their heels every time. Yeah. But here's the thing, Lucas. When I moved out of my property, within four days of me moving out, it was already listed for sale on the market. And it's still listed for sale right now, so they've not sold it yet. It's a very quick turnaround for repairs and all that jazz, isn't it? Because that was my question to my landlady of like, um, the property is listed for sale, but you've claimed that you had to do a full refurb of the entire thing because I damaged it so much. How did you get it cleaned, refurbed, up to spec in less than four days? Because it was up four days after I moved out, which means, you know, they took the photos at least two days earlier, which mm-hmm. means they probably had those photos taken and the listing made the day after I officially moved out. I, either in, that or like two days after, right? Yeah. Yeah, within the space of about 48 hours, mm-hmm. which seems like a pretty quick turnaround on, according to them, a full refurb of the entire property because I'd done so much damage. I mean, and it's... They refu- yeah. It's very funny that they managed to do all this while, like, every time you ask them to do anything in your flat, it, like, took forever. And they reckon months, that they've, yeah. like, gotten everything the... redone entirely in two days. Yeah, reminder, like, when I lived in this property, it took me three months to get them to come and have a look at the floor that had flooded because the bathroom had flooded and it was going seeping up through the floor. It took them three months to acknowledge that was a problem. And the landlord, no, the builder the landlord sent over, when I asked them, are you going to fix these like warp skirting boards? I went, ah, oh, no, it adds character to a house. And yet when I've moved out, they're now claiming that damage is my fault. So what I've done is I've been very sneaky. And I thought, well, if they're not going to tell me what the problems are, I'm just going to book in for a viewing. So I just called up the letting agent because it's still available for sale. So hey, can I book in a viewing this week? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, can you get the, the letting agent who's going to show me around? Can you just ask if they'll bring like a fact pack from the landlord about all the work that's been done in the property? <laughs> I'd, I'd like, like that for my records, if that's okay. Like, yeah, yeah, we'll get on to the landlord today. We'll make sure we have a fact pack about every little bit of work that's been done in the property. So either I'm going to get that back and it's going to say they've done no work, which means they're mm-hmm. lying to their letting agent. They've done a lot of work, which I'll ask for proof for. Or they're going to refuse to hand it over, which means they're just like, you know, they've got no evidence of it happening. Mm-hmm. So either, but I'm just like so mad. So I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to go in and ask. I'm going to pretend that I'm going to buy the place and see. Because it's either they're lying to me or they're lying to their letting agent. Because there's no fucking way it costs them five, nigh on 500 quid to clean a one bed flat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, um, you know, I uh, just out of curiosity for like oh well you know both me and my partner are working like how much would it cost for like someone to come around and clean the house for a few hours and like a full house they're like yeah a couple hundred quid yep and for a one bed flat they're saying it cost them 300 pounds and they say it took like you know over a week to get it done but the property was available for sale three four days after i moved out Mm -hmm. so what they're also charging me for a mirror that fell off the wall that is not in the pictures. And they've said, they've refused to answer, oh, I want to go in. Is that mirror there? 
I mean, that's one of my favourite ones where you just sent, like, two pictures of, like, mirror, no mirror, and just circled it saying, where mirror. Yeah, and they sent back only contact us through the Deposit Protection Agency. But every time I try and contact them, they're like, the landlord's not talking to us. So I think I'm going to get my deposit back. I mean, hopefully you do. But, Carl, you'll have to update us on another day when you, you know, have done all your sneaking around. Give it three months. Figured that out. And maybe, I'll, maybe I'll know. Do you know what the worst bit is, though? Every time I talk about this, you can tell those Americans, like, you should just sue them. So it's, like, it's such a ball ache like, to sue someone. There's a process. It just takes a long time. Like, that's the thing. It's ultimately, like- if this keeps dragging out, you do have a civil court case. But you just would rather not let it get to that point because it's a fucking ball ache. Like. It is, yeah. And it, the Deposit Protection Service, and I think there's there's two in the UK who are, like, nationally registered. Mm-hmm. And I, don't, I don't know which one I'm with, but it's one of the deposit places. And they always side with tenants. The problem is that just landlords can drag it out for as long as they like. Yeah. And they're getting to the very end of that limit. But every time I mention this, there's always in America says, you should sue them. Cause have you any idea how much it costs to sue someone? You would, like, lose all the money that you're trying to get back. Exactly, yeah. <clears throat> Either way, yes. Luke's what we're doing today. Well, first I'm clearing my throat, but after that, you know, we are, of course, doing another episode of the Wiki Weekdays podcast. I'm apparently your host for this week, even though Carl started us off with a lovely conversation, Lucas Holland, but... I'm going to be so sneaky. You know, as always, I am joined... <laughs> Should I wear a suit the... when I go do it? So I look like a real buyer? <laughs> so they, they, like, if I look serious about buying, do you think they'll like be more likely to... Um, uh... No. Because you've got to do the Adam Sandler tech of turn up looking like a slob, but like a rich slob, and they don't know. Okay. Just turn up in shorts and a t-shirt with like talking on my phone as I arrive. But Carl, I've got I've got a, a podcast to to introduce for everyone. Okay, let's go. Um, yes, yeah, so that is the lovely voice of my co-host Carl Smallwood. No. And you know, Stein, operative. For anyone new here, Carl and I are both going to bring a wiki of our choosing for a discussion, but we won't be talking about how shitty landlords are the entire time, but, you know, just, it's your job as listeners to decide which wiki won each week, and this week, Carl, it was a bit different, because, you know, people can go vote for which wiki won this week in our community Discord, of course, link to which you can find below, and... For once, the first time ever in like 60 episodes, we've had a draw. A draw. We're both equally as interesting, or as equally as boring. So, um, the, the Juicero could, couldn't could defeat Superman, but Paul no, could, Superman like, couldn't stalemate. defeat the Juicero. <laughs> That's the thing. Neither Superman or the Juicero could beat each other out. Um, and so of what's course, worse, Superman 64 or the Juicero audience can't decide. <laughs> no one can decide. Of course, for anyone watching the video version, you can see, as we've been having this discussion, the pet of the week sitting down below us, right like, over here. Well, leave me for me to like, guide me um, to my clock. Yeah, keep going, keep going. There you go. No, 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 you've gone too far. Is? You're pointing at your face now. There. Toward, further towards me on the Discord conversation. Other way, other way, there, there. other way, other way. There. there you go, yeah, there you go. Pet of the week, there we go. <laughs> What's the pet of the week this week, my friend? Uh, so the pet of the week this week is called Sam. And Sam is a border collie cross Labrador. And uh, the the little note that we've got for Sam is that you can see in this picture that she was caught eating all of the two-minute noodles. And as you can see, she was definitely surprised when I found her. I the just I is, love that, that picture of just looking up like just uh, so I've I've been been like, you know what I've already won <laughs> yeah. you can't punish me in any way that matters I've already won I've eaten the noodles it's like the picture our mutual friend kept sending to the group chat of his old dog that would sneak into their cupboard and eat the flour <laughs> it's just they found the one picture it's just the dog's face completely covered in flour it's like I don't care I don't it's know mine. what it is about flour right because um Ulrich, not long ago, like, got onto Jenna's desk somehow, but because, like... Keep in mind, Ulrich is, like, a, a, a foot-long a, dash on. Yeah, a mini sausage dog. He managed to jump from, like, the futon off onto a desk chair onto the desk to break open a, like, box that had dog cake ingredients in. And the dog cake ingredients were, like, potato flakes, like, a bit of cheese, um, some beetroot, and flour. And the one thing he ate was the plain flour. And then he managed to 
like w- made the exact same mistake of like a box arrive for Cade because it's just like a little thing through uh, the vets or whatever. Um, and the same thing, the box arrived for Cade. We made the mistake of leaving it on the desk. He got up there again and only went for the flower inside. And it's like, mate, there's like actual things with flavor in there, and you're going for the yeah. plain flower. It's just uh, all of that. I just imagine walking in and just seeing this like foot high dog on your desk. I'm like, and what? I literally came it? in and it was just like him, the desk, the keyboard, the computer, everything just covered in flour. I was like, ow. It's one of those situations where you look at it and you just, you're like, you just shut the door, right? Like, I'm not bothering it. <laughs> it's like one of those things where you're walking on the problem and you shut the door hoping someone else finds it so they have to clean it up. Oh, it really is. And, you know, Carl. If people wanted to go and submit their own pet for pet of the week, how would they That's do the, that? If you think you've got a better pet, pet photo than we've got on screen right now, well, one, you're wrong. But two, I mean, if you like to prove us wrong, they can. Well, they can be a patron on our community Discord, and we have a pet of the week channel over there where you can send a picture of your pet, and obviously, in doing so, just like name the pet, make sure that you like. Include some fun fact if you want to. It's probably more likely to get your pet on the pet of the week spot. Well, it's a fun, yeah. You get it's a funnier, better picture if there's a story to it, right? Of course, yes. So um, it's, it's already a good picture, but now it's got a story to it that's fun to tell on the podcast. It's true. It's true. And obviously, if you're not patron, if you're just on the Discord, you can be the people voting and reacting to the pictures. And Sam was the one that got the most reactions this week, so therefore is pet of the week and yeah just one of those lovely little things where you can just go over enjoy some pictures of pets if nothing else so i think so is that like the worst thing your dogs have done then with it like getting into the flower oh no um oryx not long ago um managed to drag down a jacket from a hook and get like treats in the pocket for the walk it had a bag of munchies in there carl an adult share a bag of munchies, which, of course, if people don't know, chocolate. have chocolate on them. And, uh, he and he's was only fine. a little dog. He's only like this big. Yeah, He gets smaller every time I talk about him. <laughs> he's, this, gonna say, he's only this, this big. big. <laughs> but yeah, he got into the bag while we were out as well. So, of course, he ate the entire bag and he was okay. He we monitored him. We called the vet, stuff like that. And he, he was fine. So, but, luckily, it's not real chocolate. Because <laughs> it's crap in it. It's that crap chocolate yeah. cabbage full of palm oil. This game of shits. And um, yeah, he was for the first time in a while. I saw Oryx look fat again. He was because he, he's very very skinny, and yeah, he just had like this massive bloated belly. Because it was as I say, like an adult share a bag of treats. It's all I can think of. Have you ever seen that photo of like that Australian possum that got into like the donut box? <laughs> have you ever seen that one? I probably have, but like I'm just gonna send the picture to you now because it's like basically they walked in to the bakery in the morning and just found it in the box. But just like look at the absolute, just like you can't. I've already won. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Look at he's just he's like sat completely back like I'm done, I've won. <laughs> I ate all of them. That's the thing, like the box has only been like uh, what a third of it's been eaten. But yeah. this possum clearly cannot eat more than its entire body weight of jam tarts. Yeah. So I think like the worst one for me was my old dog. Well, Penny before she passed away, because she was really bad for like nicking food. Like really, really bad for it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That, that thing one of the, still pisses me off to this day. <laughs> Doing you drop something and you have like your eye up the dog, mm-hmm. and you're like, don't do it. And I I got like a, a McDonald's, and I dropped like well, the, the in the wrapper burger on the floor, <sighs> and she saw it. I looked and went, don't do it. Don't don't do it, Penny. And she went. Whoosh! And got it and ran into the other room. She only grabbed the paper. So as she ran, the burger fell out and all the goose went on the floor in a trail behind her. Oh, God, no, my burger. But then she was like, just in, I remember she kept, ran all the way back in and went, oh, just got God. each individual piece. So, oh, she got me. She 
did. There's there's just no winning when it comes to like, are you gonna the get dog. the food first or is the dog? It's like it's the dog. Yeah. Oh dear, oh dear. But Carl, we'll we'll get through the rest of this intro. Um, Carl's Patreon video that was voted for is a, a video that was for Mirko from My Hero Academia, and that is now live yes. on the Wiki Weekends channel if you missed that. Um, we're not streaming this episode live. Uh, we are recording the day in advance, so, you know. We're just a little bit busy, yeah. We have plans, so, uh, yeah, we're not doing any of that jazz. And then just you can remember to find us on most podcast services by searching for the Wiki Weekdays podcast. And if you're enjoying the show that way, feel free to give us a swell little review if you think we've earned it. Yeah, don't forget Super Chats. Well... Yeah, you know, super. You always say that to me, but there isn't any for this one. That's the thing, I've got it all written down, I know. But um, yeah, I mean, just if you're enjoying this so far, give us a nice like, give us a comment of just like your favourite pet story of them gobbling up treats or doing something sneaky. But yeah. um, Uh, It's always well because you can't be mad at the dogs. It's like if I was just sat there on the street (laughs) and like 15 Big Macs landed in my lap, it's like I'm taking one. Oh, uh, indeed you do. But Carl, you know, we'll get get to like plugging ourselves later in the episode and all that yes. jazz. But first, you need to bring a wiki for us to enjoy. Yes, I figured, like, you know, we talk a lot about anime. You mentioned, like, Mirko from My Hero Academia. And there's one topic I've wanted to cover for a while. And I don't think it's worked for a full video with clips and stuff in. Because there is, in grand total, about five minutes of footage of this character. And right. yet, I think they're one of the most important characters in the series they hail from. Okay. And that is Future Gohan. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, cool. So, Future Gohan, for anyone who doesn't know Lucas is who? Uh, it's Gohan from the future. <laughs> yeah, in the show, Dragon Ball. And he's from the future, but an alternate future, a much worse future. He lives in like a parallel future where just the Z fighters died. And he didn't have the, like, you know, the tutelage of his dad. And because was forced like, to become Earth's Defender on his own at like eight years old. This is the Gohan that is from Trunks' timeline, correct? From Trunks' timeline, yes. He mm-hmm. was probably the hardest done character in all of Dragon Ball, which is what I always say. Like, he never gets a break. That's the thing. is he, like, he goes home, he solves the Android problem, he solves the Cell problem, like Juro is dealt with, and then it cuts forward to like Super and Trunks is back. Like, yeah, my entire world's getting destroyed by a Goku god, and it's yeah. like, oh no! Trunks. And they just de- then they just detonate his entire timeline. The guy, <laughs> yeah. his, his life sucks. But I think even more hard done by than Future Trunks is Future Gohan because he never gets talked about ever again. Mm. Like, they never mention him ever again. Like he gets like an, a, every now and again Future Trunks or like talk to Gohan and say it's nice to see the Gohan in this timeline is doing okay. Yeah, and I do. Th- think that maybe future Gohan isn't canon? He's got to be right, because he's mentioned in Super. Well, maybe they canonized it via Super, but I don't know if, like, similar to how the movies are obviously, like, non-canon to Dragon Ball Z. Like, Yeah, he's, the, like, he's in History of Trunks, right? I think uh, maybe those specials might not be. Maybe let us know in the comments whether, like, the side spin-off specials are in the same category as like the DBZ movies where they're not canon. I'd like to think that it is because it's so important to Trunks' story. But the reason I find it so sad is that in that future with future Gohan, not only is he dead, Goku's dead and Chi-Chi's dead, his entire family's dead and it never gets talked about ever again. Mm-hmm. Like one of the most important people in the universe is like in an alternate timeline, just a forgotten relic that never gets talked about because he just, he died. I mean, they they all kind of are, though, in the end. Like, obviously... Yeah, all the, all the Z fighters died. Gohan is the one that trains Trunks and helps out with Trunks becoming who he becomes, but ultimately, every person is seemingly wiped off the planet apart from Bulma and Trunks. Yep. And there's, like, still people knocking them out, but there's no yeah. Z fighters left. Yeah. Uh, when I say people, I mean, like, you know, the Z fighters, the main characters, stuff like that. Be mentioned here, so anyone unfamiliar with the idea of Future Gohan from Dragon Ball? Future Gohan uh, is the alternate timeline counterpart of Gohan that appears in the timeline in which Future Trunks lives. Future Gohan is showcased as a 23 year old man and is depicted as a mentor of Future Trunks. After his father dies from the heart virus and cannot be wished back with the Dragon Balls due to his death being of natural causes and the murder of the Z Fighters or Dragon Team, at the hands of Android 17 and 18, six months later, Gohan becomes Earth's literal last line of defense. 
And he's like, he's the only guy left, right? And it's just him and the androids, and they're just whipping his ass every other day. I never really put two and two together that the reason Goku couldn't come back was because he died of natural causes. He died of natural causes, yeah. He didn't he didn't die an undue death. Mm. Which is one of the rules of like the dragons, isn't it? It's to wish people back. It's like you've got to be pure of heart and have died before your time of unnatural causes like murder. Right. Yeah. Which is how they're able to wish civilians back when like Super Boo like just yeah. genocide the planet, right? Mm-hmm. It's like they all died unnaturally before their time and they were innocent. Well right, you gotta yeah. think at least like Super Boo must have hit at least one like criminal, right? <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. At least one. Statistically you must have hit at least one criminal. I mean that's true. Or do you think just King Yemma just went, fuck doing all this paperwork to send them all back? Yeah, like can you be bothered dealing with like billions of people at the same time all dying? Because like don't they even show it at one point where there's just like I think either when Cell or Boo kills a bunch of people, there's just like yeah. this infinite line of people and they're like, what yeah. am I meant to do? And it's why like when the Z fighters show up, it's like they recognise they've still got their bodies. Mm-hmm. Right? Either way, but yeah, we're getting a bit deep into the weeds there. So, huh. Gohan becomes Earth's last line of defence. Now a Super Saiyan, he spends the following 13 years attempting to take down the androids, all while training future Trunks in the hopes that he may one day be able to defeat them. And that's like the roughest part as well is, he goes Super Saiyan super early because his dad died. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't have the mentorship to actually control that power. Yeah. and So he still has the potential of the original Gohan, but he, just has, he has no way of focusing it. It's very funny because like, I think people often forget that we refer to Teen Gohan as Teen Gohan because he's aged up a little bit. Actually, that kid's like 9 to 11 years old, depending on what part of the story they're in. Yep. It's just because he's a Saiyan, so he just rips his balls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, just... Speaking of like, you know, just being a small child appearance, Future Gohan appears as a tall, stern, and muscular man. He dons a uniform greatly resembling that of his father's early uniform and states that he inspired to wear it in the hopes that he'll one day be as strong as he was. Which is fair, yes. and it's the only time when I'm like, I don't mind that he's not wearing the, the piccolo outfit this time. Yeah, because this is a Gohan who died, who horribly lost his father at a young age, and then lost his father figure. Because mm-hmm. Go- Goku dies, and then all the Z fighters die, like six months later, when the androids rock up. Yeah, exactly. The, the rest of everyone just gets killed by the androids, so... Which, it sucks as well, right? Because it means he had no one to train him. Not even, like, Yamcha or Krillin. I mean, it's... At least they... they at least they studied in the turtle school. They could have taught yeah. him. You it, know, like, the techniques that would allow him to, like, you know, just have that edge in battle. It really doesn't explain why none of the Z fighters can be wished back other than Goku. So he's just like, ah... I think it's that they kill Piccolo first. So they kill Piccolo oh, first, right. they lose the Dragon Balls. Yeah, that's true. That's Which true. I never got that. It's like, during the Freezer arc, where he says, wish me back, because then we get the Dragon Balls back, mm-hmm. and then he immediately has to be wished back to Namek. It's like, but you think if you get killed on Namek, <laughs> we lose the Dragon Balls again? <laughs> Why not just wish Piccolo back, wait until we get the Dragon Balls back, and then wish to bring Namek back mm-hmm. after Freezer kills it? Oh, dear. But yeah, it's just like... I, I, I guess that they never had the resolution of we could just go to Namek. Like, send Trunks off to Namek to go get the Dragon Balls there. Yeah, well, they didn't know, did they? They didn't know they existed. Well, I would presume they did, because you would presume that everything went the same up until the Android saga. So, like, mm-hmm. I would presume that even in that timeline, Bulma has been to Namek and Gohan has been to Namek. But so, then... oh, we don't know. We don't. We don't know exactly how that like timeline differentiates, do we? Because mm-hmm. again, they never really explore it, which is why I think it's like such a shame. It's one of my favourite ideas in the series, and it just never really gets any play until like a bit more with Goku Black, I suppose. But even then, it's more a focus on the future still fucked. Mm-hmm. But there we go. Bulma even states that Gohan looks strikingly familiar to Goku when wearing his uniform. He never changed his hairstyle since childhood. That's why he still has like the the mop on top. He never grew it out. Never got it short, and he just kept the same unruly haircut you had when he was like five, six years old. <laughs> because the only person who could have cut and styled his hair is dead. And I do think, do you know what they should have done? Like, do you know in like the Goku Black arc, mm. where Goku finds out that Goku Black killed Chi Chi and just absolutely just wants his ass for like 15 minutes straight? <laughs> they should have told like present Goku, during Future Trunks goes back, he should have told Goku that. 
Mm. So let me yeah. just go to your timeline for a little bit. And I'll fucking show these androids <laughs> what for. Yeah, because like, that is one thing that um, is not really explored, is the idea of Trunks bringing the time machine into a different timeline and being like, hey, Goku, can you go kill the androids for me? <laughs> like, no, but I, guess, I guess at that point, he's still not strong enough, right? That's the point. Well, yeah, he yeah. He, he wouldn't have been strong enough to beat them. That's why he warns them, and the, with the six months of warning, they can train. It's also why he brings back the cure for the heart disease, isn't it? We have that line where it's like, you die of a heart disease, and Goku's really bummed about it. It's like, mm-hmm. that kind of sucks. I'm like the greatest warrior in the world, I die of a heart disease. Like, ah, there's no cure for it. But in my timeline, there is. And then he forgets his pills. Which yeah. is such a Goku thing. He forgets the pills that'll save his life. He just doesn't take them. Yeah, when people, like, talk about how dumb Goku is in Super and he was clever in Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball, I'm like, did you forget about the part where he just didn't take his, like, heart medication? He literally got told he will die if he does if not he take, take it. And he never thinks to ask Bulma to replicate it so he's got a billion of them. <laughs> And just, but like, you know, when cells setting up the cell games and they all start like turning into like ascendant super saiyans and then yeah. shit like that, it's at that point they're way stronger than the androids. Like, while they've got a week to drink, they not just be like, hey, Vegeta, just do me a favor, go, go back, back and whoop these androids for me. Joe you know and I never got as well. It's like during the super arc, Joe, you know they're talking about who we're going to get for the team mm-hmm. to save the universe. I always thought during that arc they'd go and get Trunks. I thought they'd mm. go into the future and ask Trunks, like, hey, we saved your timeline. Can you come help save ours? And I was excited for the idea of Trunks and Gohan being able to train together. Because I can't remember, like, where do they leave future Trunks? In a different timeline. In just a, a different one. one, yeah. They erase his timeline and make a new one. Mm-hmm. Like, future Zeno just makes a new one for him. Yeah, it would be. Hey, uh, like we've helped you out a couple of times, mate. Could you just come join us for a bit? Well, I thought that was going to happen. I thought when they're saying we need to find someone, we've not got enough people, I thought they were going to go into the future and get future trunks. Or at the very least, when it's like, oh no, you know, they're not allowing us to use Martian Boo. Like, yeah, go grab trunks for a bit. That's what I thought. I legit thought they were going to go get future trunks to let him like, be part of the timeline again or, like, you know, help. Mm-hmm. It makes so much thematic sense, right? If they saved his future, now save ours. And he said they go get Freezer and let him live again. Uh, which the worst idea is it's a great idea for us, the viewers, because we get more Freezer. But we get more Freezer, yes. And you know, yeah. Uh, again, like you could pick someone stronger than Roshi, but at the same time, it's just I like the gimmick of it being a tournament arc where you can do things like throw your opponent out because then Master Roshi's like experience. Just Mifubu, I'm all the joint in and everybody. <laughs> he should have just the... came in with like 20 bottles. Like, I'm, Doing I'm the working. manga, like Jiren thinks he's got Ultra Instinct. Like He stands up to Jiren for a little bit. Oh, really? Yeah, because in the manga, they think Roshi's got Ultra Instinct. It's like, no, he's just that good at martial arts. It borders on precognition because when Jiren throws a punch, even though he's super strong... He still throws a punch the same way everyone else would. Mm-hmm. So he's helped predict it. And like you see like the other gods gathered, like, does that old man have ultra instincts? Like, no, he's just really <laughs> fucking good at martial arts. And he's just like, he's fucking just whomping Jiren for a little bit until Jiren punches him with his eyes. Because that's the thing, right? Is Master Roshi either could just put him in a bowl, or he could just like figure out a way to knock Jiren out of the arena. Yeah. Like, in in theory. Like, that's why Roshi is still, I think, a fascinating pick, because it's not just going for the people who can fire the strongest beams. It's like, well, who's someone that could use a bit of tactics in this fight? Who's why they pick um, Krillin as well, isn't it? It's like, Krillin's not as strong as us, but he has such a wide variety of techniques. Like, he's mm-hmm. not as strong as me, but he's probably stronger than, like, 98% of people in this universe, which means he's probably stronger than 98% of the people in their universe as well. That's what I find like, so funny with, like, Dragon Ball scaling, is, like, any of the Z fighters, including like fucking Yamcha, in any other anime, he's insanely strong. He's like a planet yeah. buster. Yeah, like Yamcha could probably beat anyone from Naruto. Like he he could probably destroy Earth. Easy, yeah. Well, think Piccolo destroys the moon. Yeah. In like the first like arc of Dragon Ball Z, and that's before he undergoes the same power up training that they all do on Namek. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, on King Kai's planet. On King Kai, yeah, like. 
that's the thing. In so, theory, as much as he's a chump compared to everyone else, like just look at what TN did to sell, for example, and like oh, Yamcha and then can't he's be even that stronger far since then, right? And mm. what I always think is when I'm watching that is um, there's a great bit in I think it's Resurrection F. Like when Freezer comes to Earth and like the Freezer soldiers are going to attack Krillin, mm-hmm. and one of them throws a punch at Krillin, and he's like, just dodges it effortlessly. And it's like, why are they punching in slow motion? It's like Krillin, <laughs> you hang around with the strongest person in the universe, so you probably think you're pretty weak. You've got such a warp scale of how strong you actually are because the fact that you can even follow what the strongest human being on planet Earth is doing while he's fighting a god mm-hmm. from a, like you know when they're watching Goku fight. Beerus, they're fighting in orbit, and Krillin's been out of seat with his eyes. It's like, <laughs> what do you think Freezer Force member number three is going to do to you? <laughs> yeah, it it does like that's a good example of when you know they kind of scale the power back to someone as weak as a Freezer Force member. It's like T- to put into oh, perspective how yeah. strong he is. Yeah, it's like oh yeah, it just every single one of the Z fighters is insanely powerful and like could probably, as I say, just be a fucking planet destroyer. In their own right, yeah. It's just that they all hang around with a guy who can destroy the universe. Yeah. <laughs> so like, it's like you say, Yamcha. I think Yamcha could beat anybody in Naruto because the closest anyone in Naruto gets is like, blowing up an entire like continent, which is not a planet. Mm-hmm. So keep in mind, like, you know, I think Yamcha could probably beat base-level Freezer at this point. Oh, yeah, Just keep yeah, in mind, like, yeah. Joe, in the, what was it, the baseball arc, which is canon. Mm-hmm. It's a filler episode, but it's canon. Vegeta throws a baseball like well, or Super Saiyan Blue Force and Yamcha <laughs> outruns it. Like he steals third. Yeah. From people who can instant transmission. <laughs> like pretty, like that thing is, you know, obviously not all of them can instant transmission, but they Goku might can. Goku can specifically. And he moves fast enough as well to like, you know, get the drop on Vegeta. Mm-hmm. Because Vegeta doesn't realise he's stealing third. Yeah, like when you are hanging around with, I should say, people that can destroy universes, you're going to appear pretty weak. Or a but. joke. And that's one of the things, again, I was disappointed Yamcha's not in the Z Fighters. Because like, there's even a little a joke at the end of like this, the Tournament of Power arc where Yamcha's in his house with uh, with Pua. Like, I wonder if, when they're going to call me. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like the third... It's like, he plays a joke, but he's the third strongest Earthling. That, he's the, probably the like the sixth thing... strongest person in the universe. Yeah, the one thing that must be frustrating is when he's sitting there going like, wait, you called Roshi? Like, you got Roshi? I've trained with fucking King Kai. Yeah. Like, Roshi's not done that shit. It's like, I get the whole, you know, experience and stuff of Roshi, but like, imagine being Yamcha in that situation and finding out like, man, they called Master Roshi before they called he me. Never, he doesn't even train. <laughs> at least I go, to, like, at least I'm a baseball player. I could have brought a bit of personal. I got some branding. But either way, and the final thing he mentions here about um, future Gohan is my favourite aspect of his characterization, and the thing that I get disappointed that isn't referenced more. Um, in addition to just bearing a striking physical resemblance to Goku, he sports a scar down the left side of his face, as well as the loss of his left arm. Mm-hmm. And I love the fact that even with one arm, he's still strong enough to stand up to both androids at once. Yeah, yeah. And also you get the great bit where he does like the special beam cannon. Because you think, he hasn't got an arm. How's he going to throw a Kamehameha? And you think, oh, is he going to do the same thing that Gohan does? Well, I guess that's before he throws the one-arm Kamehameha in the show. He's like, no, man, just does special beam cannon. Because of Mm -hmm. course, he didn't train with Goku. He trained with Piccolo for six months, then Piccolo fucking died. Yeah. And um, it's just like, really funny to me that it's like ultimately just it basically is just like Trunks gets him killed like he is strong enough to at least stalemate two androids one armed literally one armed yeah and then Trunks is like no I'll help oh no I got you killed it's like fuck's sake Trunks so you could you just could have just and he just dies then he never gets mentioned again Mm -hmm. the strongest being or the person with the most potential in all of Dragon Ball just dies unceremoniously. And that is one thing that's probably a bit like sad about that is right that he's got the most potential out of maybe any character. And yep. even in the second timeline, whether like, man, he's he's basically our last hope. He's the only one left strong enough to be able to fight the androids. What happens? Oh, he gets bitched out. It's like oh, for fuck's yeah. sake. Well, oddly enough, it apparently he survives. 
Oh, really? So all that pointless. It says here, I didn't realise this, in Dragon Ball Super, in the Future Trunk saga, in the bonus story chapter, a flashback oh, shows that future Gohan um, survived the battle with the androids he'd left to find the Dragon Balls. Oh. Okay, fair enough. I mean, that's some fucking retconning going on right there, but... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess that answers our question of whether he's canon or not, though. I guess, like... But he does mention that. Oh, he only appears in flashbacks. His spirit was destroyed when future Zeno erased the timeline to defeat Zamasu. No. <laughs> I like the idea that, like... His spirit dies, yeah. Trunks... That's it, that's it, and he never gets mentioned. Like Trunks didn't even mention, like, oh, oh, shit, I need to just, like, get Gohan out of this timeline as well. Like, no, no, just Gohan got erased. <laughs> Yeah, so he mentioned that he survives for a little bit as a child, and then he dies, and then he sees. So even though, so basically, they rewrote his timeline for the future Trunk Saga in Dragon Ball Super. So mm-hmm. that he survived for a little bit and went to Namek and stuff, but then he still died when the androids fought him. Ah, uh, okay, right. So yeah, they they've changed his uh, backstory a little bit. Uh, again, this is the confusing part about like Dragon with Ball, yeah, Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Super, and like. The fact that, you know, we talk about the movies and, like, GT and stuff there all nothing to do with, super. like, the manga, so they're not canon, and what parts of the movies and specials and stuff are and aren't. And I know for a fact that fucking Xenoverse 2 is not canon with all that But bullshit. it does reference him. Yeah, yeah, and um, one thing I double-checked just in the background a minute ago was, like, I was correct in thinking they announced that you're going to be able to play future Gohan specifically in Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. And does he have one arm? Yeah, yeah. That's the thing I, so I hate. How be... They always show him with two arms. And it's like, the... no, he has one arm. That's the thing that different. That's what makes him a cool person. Like, an interesting pick for a game like that of he's a character with one arm. How yes, does his fighting um... style change based on that? In the trailer, they, they seemingly show him with just one arm. So, like, he will be specifically future Gohan, one-armed, like, completely separate character, which I'm excited about because, yeah, the, I think that they might have done it in, like, Budokai Tenkaichi 2 or 3 or something, but he just had two arms. He has two arms, and he just doesn't use his left one. And it's like, For, okay. like, censorship reasons. It's like, he lost his arm. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't understand why that's such a big deal for censors, of, like, the character has one arm. It's like, uh, yeah, sure, don't show it getting ripped out of its socket or something, but... He just does all have it is arm. is that he has like one sleeve with nothing in it. Like it's I, not. I always yeah, and I always picked me in Raging Blast too because I think that's the one. There's a version where he doesn't. He, whichever one of those Raging Blast games has me one arm. So I always loves this throw animation. He just picks it with one arm and just slams you over his shoulder like Broly does. <laughs> because he fights more aggressively because he didn't have time to refine his skills. He fights just like on pure instinct. And, you know, maybe that's just a little bit of Piccolo in there. Just a little bit. And he mentions here that, oh, imagine Piccolo talking the arm-stretching thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've only got one arm, but man, can I use it? And he mentions here, finally, power. So, um, Gohan was defeated by Future Android 17 in battle who had only used half of his strength, unbeknownst to Future Gohan. He then trained for a year following this. A year later, base form Gohan easily overwhelms Super Saiyan Trunks as they trained together. Future Gohan states that he had wished he was as strong as his father, had been, but it was not an easy task to get to that level. He also believed that Future Trunks would surpass him in just a few months, which is a, a trend in the series of like just younger Saiyans having near infinite potential. Like, you know, not to the potential of a child to surpass often their father or father figure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a uh, one of those very silly things, isn't it, where like, oh, the more human a Saiyan is, the stronger they are, because like, you know, we're humans right in it, and you've got to believe in like, the power of humanity, and mm-hmm. it's no, the Saiyans are the fucking warrior race. The more Saiyan you are, the more stronger you should be. I think it's more to do with the fact, though, that the more a Saiyan begins to embrace their humanity, the more they're able to fight for those they care about. Like, the reason that the Saiyans were never really able to achieve the Super Saiyan form is mm-hmm. because to do so requires extreme emotional duress, and the Saiyans were such a stoic people. But then you have, like, you know, when Gohan loses his parents, turns Super Saiyan, when Goku loses his best friend, when Trunks loses his mentor, when Freezer is just so mad at Goku. Like, 
when fucking Vegeta's just angry that he's not as strong as Goku is. And, like, that's the thing is, you say, like, oh, they're such, like, stoic people, and then you just cut to, like, Vegeta just being like, I'm so mad. I still have all that great fan art that happened during Pride Month of Vegeta at Pride of like, Sir, what does Pride mean to you when he gives a whole big speech? He's only like bad man shirts. So Let's assume he's there. <laughs> it's like, Pride is the most important thing to a warrior. You should always fight for your pride. And everyone's like, woohoo! And he's like, these people get it. <laughs> I, 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 I just, I do kind of like the fact that, you know, we are in a position now with Super where Goku and Vegeta are the strongest because, like, it's not even necessarily the fact that, oh, I, you know, the pure Saiyans should be the strong ones. It's the fact that they're the two that fucking put the work in. I also and- look as well where the the, different- the difference between them is so minuscule, even they don't know who's stronger anymore. Mm-hmm. But it's just, yeah, it makes very little sense other than, like, you know, oh, we, we have to, like, you know, make Gohan the strongest. It's like... But why do we have to make Gohan the strongest? He gave up on trade. The same with like what annoys me about uh, the superhero film is just, well, I I acknowledge that I stopped training for years and years, but I got real angry one time and unleashed like beast mode, which is like yeah. stronger Super Saiyan God or something, and it's like which fuck we've off. talked about before. Of like, it's more frustrating in the sense that Gohan was always a character who wanted to very much get away from his emotions being in control of who he is. And he even says in one of the episodes of like, I want to master a transformation that is better than Super Saiyan. That doesn't rely on me losing control of myself. Yeah, and that's why you get Ultimate Mystic Gohan. Yeah, it's why that that form is one of the best forms of Gohan. Is that ultimately he decides to become Ultimate Gohan without the use of his Super Saiyan form because, because he doesn't he, need it. He it's would prefer to stay in a form where he has complete control. Yep, and that's his. Cr- and I always like that differentiating from Goku, who's happy to embrace the act, like you know his Saiyan heritage, and then Vegeta, who gives into his rage, but it's more like his lust for battle. And that's the thing, right? Is that Goku doesn't necessarily like the fact that Super Saiyan three, for example, he becomes like super enraged all the time. Like Goku well, doesn't necessarily re- like that part tool. of it, but he's willing to utilize it because it needs to. To be used to win, but yeah, Vegeta's just full like, fuck yes, yeah, let's go. He's more like focused on his pride, and I love that as the series has gone on, they've differentiated him further, where Goku, as a martial arts prodigy, he's mastered Ultra Instinct, which is like just the purest expression of martial arts prowess, and anyone doesn't know Ultra Instinct, it's like this, basically this state the gods enter, where they are one with nothing, and essentially their mind is free from all distractions, where they focus solely on combat, which allows them to effortlessly dodge or evade any attack. Mm-hmm. Because Goku is like a prodigy who just fucking loves martial arts, whereas Vegeta gets ultra ego, which focuses on pure, raw, unmitigated aggression. Which we unfortunately haven't seen in the anime, and I'm upset about that. Maybe we will soon. And speaking of abilities, Lucas, we have here the abilities of future Gohan. I know he only appears on screen for like five minutes, unless you count Xenoverse, which is in the entire fucking game, but do you have like a favourite move that he does? I mean, I uh, I just always got a bit frustrated that he completely abandoned the Masenko. Yeah, because that was his move, right? Because it's like he had the Masenko, Goku had the Kamehameha, mm-hmm. Piccolo has his. Like, so everyone has their signature move, right? And then Gohan doesn't really have a signature move anymore. No, not really. Like, same with Vegeta um, having the Gallic Gun, but like, he obviously replaces that with like the Final Flash and the Big Bang Attack, which again doesn't necessarily use too much. But yeah, it's like Vegeta's got a few that you don't see much anymore. Then. Gohan just seemingly, apart from like I think future Gohan does use the Masenko one time, but yes, and the Hyper Masenko, which is with a one-handed one. Yeah, the um, the Gohan that we see in like the the Prime Z timeline just abandons the Masenko after the Freezer Saga. Yeah, which is a shame because I, like, I like that everyone had the signature move and Gohan mm-hmm. doesn't really have one anymore. I mean, like, maybe even like the best... Future Trunks has like he has like Burning Attack and Heat Dome Attack and Change the Future. I think maybe the best one is still just the Hell Zone Grenade, though. Hell Zone Grenade, where it's just like the... <laughs> and then just the... <sighs> Such a cool idea. It's great. Oh, my favourite one was just name-wise is Vegeta's of Dirty Fireworks. That's where he like, oh, throws you into yeah. the air and that goes... Poo! It's just yeah, such a great name for a move, like Dirty Fireworks. And that's the thing is, I don't even know whether that's like 
technically a move or just one thing that he did one time in the anime and then the games were just like oh yeah let's make this a thing too do you have like a favorite name for an attack like you said like hell's own grenade was any other ones that you want to single out because i'm a big fan of that one i like android 70s i forget what it's called but it's the one where he's like puts his arms out and just t pose and spins and fires like the green energy wave (laughs) i like that one um yeah, I'm not really sure. Like, I think Hell's Own Grenade name wise is maybe my favourite. I think yeah. um I can't remember what it's called, but I think one of my favourite moves is still the Android 16 one where he just throws you onto the ground and just like takes his arms off and blasts you. Oh yeah, you. I think that's Hell Impact because all of his oh, have, yes. like Hell in there or something like that. But Hell Impact where he just throws you into the ground and just <laughs> just incinerate, right? Yeah, that was always one of my favourite moves. It just looks so cool of just point blank, just double arm, just annihilation. Yeah, it's more the fact he throws them down so hard. Mm-hmm. I'm a fan as well of Android 17 and 18's Excel Dance. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where they team up. And then I've got to give you shout-outs to the classic, the Yamcha Wolfang Fist. Oh, yeah, that's true. And also just Spirit Ball. I think he's Spirit like... Ball's great, where he controls it. He's one of the first people to do that. Yeah, Which seems they really occasionally useful. show um, people controlling Kamehameha's, but like pretty much the only person to consistently control his key like that is Yamcha. And he controls it so effectively as well. Mm-hmm. So much more effectively than almost anyone else on the show. Yeah, which, again, like you got to give Yamcha his props. He was a cool character back in the day yeah, when he was and he made up actually... that move. That's a move he made for himself. Mm-hmm. That's his signature move. Like, obviously he was way more relevant in Dragon Ball and they almost immediately made him a joke character in Z, but mm-hmm. yeah, like, he, he is and, like, definitely back in the day was a cool character. Uh, I just like, though, Wolfang Fist because they've got, like, the 500 different versions of it in, like, all the games. Mm-hmm. And there was that one from, like, Raging Blast 1, if you remember, that I'd always do to you when we play the game. And it's where he does, like, the Wolfang Fist and it's, like, it's like 40 seconds long. Mm-hmm. does no damage yeah. and it ends with him just going... <laughs> just gives the shitty goofy grin but you could chain it into itself and just keep doing it man i miss um early patches of like fighter z where just or fighters where just i always had yamcha as my anchor character where like if people don't know what that means just you have a team of three and your like anchor is the yeah. one that you always save till the end and they get a bit of like a a bump in power but just like yeah um well, they don't get a bump in power, but like when you use like the Z sparking thing, it lasts longer powerful, if you just use yeah. it on one character, yeah. And yeah, I'd always just save it to the end, get Yamcha out, Wolfang Fist in everywhere, and it's like, man, he was so strong back in the day. It's just the fact that the man's so committed to branding that when he does it, you hear an actual wolf. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he makes the wolf with his own voice as well, which I like. He does the Awu himself, but there's also a wolf Awu put in there. Mm-hmm. That man's just committed to his um uh, his branding. I like the idea that he's just got like a little speaker in his pocket or something and he just presses play. It's more the fact he just creates a wolf of spirit energy that flies out with him. No one else does anything as impressive as that. Mm-hmm. No one else manages to create a construct of energy as detailed as what Yamchaz does. Because like, Yamchaz makes noise. And we don't know whether that's just the like, representation of it yeah whether that's just stylization or whether that's actually happening so you never no one ever comments on the fact they see the wolf but they mm. definitely hear the noise yeah. <laughs> maybe right? it's just poir just in his pocket it might be. It just comes out as a wolf like yeah yeah i'm sure i got you it's just the fact as well he's like best friends with like this weird transforming cat person that never gets mentioned either so it cracks me up uh, yeah again like another one of those dragon ball relics where just um, you know, you've got Pua and I can't remember Oolong, um, yeah. Yajirobe, like a lot of those characters just kind of get put to the side. Yeah. It's like Pua's one of those ones that's like, that's Yamcha's best friend, it's just this floating cat. Yeah, yeah. That can transform perfectly yeah. into like another a human. human being, yeah. But they just prefer to be a cat. And I think they even have that in Super, it's like the most uncomfortable part. It's like, Pua, do you can transform into a stacked anime girl and they're like, yeah. So would you mind doing that to lure Master Roshi out of like his trance? It's like, you know I hate doing that, Yamcha. Why are you asking me to do this? Like, I wouldn't ask you to do it if it wasn't really important. And I feel so bad for Poir. It's like, stop making me turn into hot lady, Yamcha. 
It's yeah. uncomfortable. Do you think Yamcha did that to like make Bulma jealous when she broke up with him? She rocked up with Poire on the arm. <laughs> it's like, well, you're dating the Prince of All Saiyans, I'm dating a hot anime cat girl. Who's the real winner? Do you reckon uh, it was actually Poire that dated um, Krillin back in the day when it was like Marin that was stealing all of Krillin's money? It was like, actually just Poire. <laughs> Where did Krillin get any fucking money from? He was a security guard. He was a beat cop, man. Well, uh, isn't it the joke that like... I, I know for a fact that in uh, a bridge they made the joke that it's a life insurance policy that he took out on himself, and I'm like, I'm wondering whether that's just like actually what happened. I can't remember now. I think it's because, like just she was a because he's the strongest man on earth, right? There's bound to be some sort of money you can make. I guess yeah, the like man he might have won a tournament somewhere or something. But he does rock I think, up. In I think like he a, won like the world tournament or something. He, yeah, he does have a sports car and everything. Like he does yeah. have money. Well, I imagine like when they saw him on TV during the cell games, he had a lot of TV appearances. <laughs> but they were all just like they were all, uh, you know, using tricks and mirrors and everything. You know, Hercule's yeah. the only one that actually had any strength, girl. And that's the thing. It's again, Hercule again. He's a joke character, but he's legitimately he's like the argument can be made. He is the physically strongest human being without superpowers on Earth. It's like, don't yeah, forget, not, like, when not, he's introduced... Not like, he dra- about, like, the Z-Fires and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you discount, like, those eight people... Like, he's in probably the top ten strongest people on Earth. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe yeah. 11 if you want to include, like, Ox King and stuff in there. But, like, you see him drag a double-decker bus into an arena by himself and then punch through the side of it. That's not that's not, not impressive. No, no. He's, he's not a joke in comparison to other humans. He's just a joke in comparison to Z-Fires. And the fact they joke about he's not a real martial artist. He is. He's a legitimately great martial artist. It's just the people he fights have got superpowers. Yeah, I'd also, like, shit my pants if I was a world martial artist and decided to fight someone who could blow up a planet. Yeah. Well, I think, like, his backstory is the guy who trained him. It was, like, mercenary Tao killed him. Mm. And he's like, if you see a guy, you can kill people with his tongue. (laughs) <laughs> you don't want to mess with people with superpowers again, right? Anyway, that's you know that's a story for another day. That's future okay. Gohan. Like one day we need to just you know talk more Dragon Ball so that you can put in the clip a mercenary tower riding on the riding on it's the, the tree. It's the coolest fucking thing, right? It's just so he can't <laughs> fly, so he just throws the fucking pillar. It's like why don't you just jump that far then? But it's because it's so much cooler to surf a tree, Carl. Yeah. Just surf a tree through the air instead of flying. Fuck you. It's, it's like when Master Roshi never learned to fly. But in Dragon Ball Fighters, he just fires a Kamehameha the opposite way. <laughs> yeah. And that's how he moves around. Oh, uh, man. So that's the kind of shit I want to see in Sparking Zero, is just give us a mercenary tower flying those... around on trees. Yeah, yeah. give us those dumbass characters, yes. But Lucas, um, uh, what would you like to plug before we move on to your thing, Monfret? Well, one thing that I would like to plug is that I need to go to use the toilet. So, you know, okay. I need to go take a break quickly. Okay, no problem. I'll do the same thing. We'll be back in, like, um, a minute. Well, then, we are back, Carl. And I guess, you know, since I rudely interrupted us, maybe you could plug yourself first. Uh, well, I guess I could plug my Twitch stream. It's, like, normally what I do. And then... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what's your Twitch stream, Carl? I, like, oh, plug it. Tw- Don't just tell it, us that it exists. It's always linked below, and it's twitch.tv forward slash Carlswood. There we go. Also, Fact Fiend is back, and if you're listening to this episode a day or two after release, then the episode going up this week will star Lucas, which will allow you to plug your stuff, as well as anything else that you know, we're working on jointly, which is, includes this. Mm-hmm. It's a good segue for you, because I don't like promoting my own stuff. No, I know, but, you know, obviously, as you mentioned, like, Fact Fiend is back, so... Um, maybe I'll try and remember to to put the link to Fat Fiend in the description below. Um, I don't know how many people are like subscribed to this without being subscribed to Fat Fiend, but the heroes, that's it. Of course, um, you know, if you're not, go subscribe over there and go watch Carl usually on Fridays, but normally over the weekend at some point playing yes, Metal Gear I... Rising Revengeance on Twitch as well. And the actual day that the video goes live will depend on just when the people who will most benefit from the plug will like need it so friday is normally mm-hmm. good for when you're in the video because that means like you know over the weekend people checking out the video they'll scroll down and see hey a link to wiki weekends where we'll have two new videos going up exactly. it might not always be a friday because someone might want something plugging on a thursday or a wednesday or heavens forbid a tuesday heaven forbid yeah don't <laughs> know no. 
<laughs> but yes, uh, for myself, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Legend of Canto. And I, the moment I've been doing like Mass Effect Mondays, um, Tunic Tuesdays, which is Elder Games, and then um, Thunder Badge Thursdays, where we focus on Pokemon. And I've been doing like some competitive battling and Pokemon Omega Ruby Randomizer at the moment. And yep. just to mix things up a little bit, just go and follow me and keep an eye out for a notification in our community Discord as well, which I will be. Uh, just letting people be aware of whenever I decide to do an Elden Ring playthrough. Where... I'm waiting for that because I just want to see you actually just smash all the way through it. Yeah, I'm going to... I think I might do it this coming weekend, but I'm not sure. I think I've got some plans, so it might have to be pushed back. But um, yeah, I'm basically just like figuring that out a little bit. But as I say, I'll just tag people in um, the Discord and let people know when I'm going live. So keep an eye out there. But... Yes. Yeah, I'm just going to plan on doing like a New Game Plus run on Elden Ring with my like overpowered character and just do an absolute you your blitz. Ring Fit adventure ready, yeah. I'm not I'm not D- doing any DDR map. No, no, no. I'm just New Game Plus regular playthrough and going to go through and just annihilate all the main bosses and just see which, how quickly I can do that. Which to be fair as well, is probably rarer to see online than someone doing like a challenge run. I mean, at this point, yeah, probably. It's probably just a bunch of people struggling with the DLC and a load of people being like, hey, I can beat the game with, like, two backwards DDR mats or something. Like, I saw that the person that had been doing, um, I think it was, like, an electric flute playthrough of Elden Ring has now beaten, like, bosses in the DLC or the entire DLC or something. Yeah, it's, it's patience. Mm-hmm. The number one thing, I had this conversation in my stream, like, last time I did it, of Elden Ring and Souls games are not difficult they're punishing mm-hmm. it's a very different thing of like with patience almost nothing in that game is challenging because the bosses are relentless but very very deliberate in everything that they do it's the, there's the, a the reason why is... like i was watching an elden ring playthrough on game stone quick and they literally level up about four times like they every single boss they have learned the patterns of they know the exact like weapon to get the exact level to build it up to the exact pattern that they need to do to stagger the boss and then get an extra hit and then do like the poise stab and then do one more final hit and they know the exact moment to wait for the exact like three four hits that they need to do and it's been solved like it really has been it's like people who play like blind punch out if it's just a series of button presses in a row mm-hmm. i'm not saying it's like this is like it's it's difficult to do but the thing of it's a diff the game's reputation as being difficult is way overblown it's not that it's like the way i summed it up is it's because it goes against your expectations mm-hmm. of like what the trappings of the genre are like in most video games you can expect to walk through a door and be fine not have an enemy jump out from behind that door and like just hit you on the back of the head with a, a hammer. Mm-hmm. That happens in Elden Ring and Blood Soul, uh, Bloodborne, and other Souls games because yeah, yeah. that's becomes a, that's become a staple of that game, and it only works because it's going against your expectations of the entire medium. And now it's kind of funny because we've got to a point where they've been putting out Souls games for like. I want to say probably around 15 years now. I think it was like maybe close to 20. I think Demon Souls was maybe like mm-hmm. 2006 or 7 or something on the PS3. So like it's gone to the point where the people who have played all of these games, their expectations at this point are that things are going to jump out behind walls and kill them out of nowhere and stuff. So like how do you then defy expectations for those players? Mm-hmm. But that's like where a lot of the difficulty comes from. It's like, and it's kind of interesting to think that like, the difficulty comes from it's playing on your awareness of the medium. Mm-hmm. Like the game's difficulty or you know, its perceived difficulty comes as a result of it going against your expectations from the medium as a whole. So it's like it's meta difficulty in a way or meta surprises. Yeah, and it, it would be interesting to see somebody with a very little gaming experience try to play those games in the sense of like, well, they might not have the you know, the muscle memory to be, like, 
adept at the video game to begin with, but they also wouldn't have those expectations of, you know, again, like, you know, as you say, like, things that the games are trying to, like, make you slip up on. It's like... Yes. Like, those yeah. tricks only work because they go against what you'd expect from a video game. Mm-hmm. So like the same it would, thing it would like be interesting, the obtuse but... design and stuff like that. It's like it's only difficult because we're so used to every other game offering us basic information about the world setting and how stuff works. Mm-hmm. Which I think you know that's not that's difficult in a sense, but it's like it's fake difficulty almost because it's only difficult because the game is being willingly obtuse in getting across its systems and how it functions. It's very true, but we're not here to talk about no. Elden Ring all day. What are we here to talk about, Monfra? Well, uh, we are here to talk about something that is related to Marvel, and it was okay. a, a thing that I'm not very aware of, but I just like heard about its existence through, like, I think it was like a podcast I was listening to or something, and they just like mentioned it. I was like, that sounds interesting, and it's not like the biggest wiki page or, or anything, but I'm I'm willing to like. Find out what this thing is with you and the audience at the same time, Carl. Okay, tell me. So, Carl, are you aware of, in Marvel, the Eternity Mask? If you tell me what characters it's associated with, I might know. It might be like a, um, by a different name. Well, the current owner is Loki, but it has had okay, many owners familiar. over the time, um, including... Doctor Strange and Miss America, who is America Chavez. But yeah, it's a it's a mask. Um it is created from Eternity's substance and it is in oh, reality yeah. that, that weird primordial being that is like a metaphysical concept made flesh, right? Eternity. Yeah, yeah. Or not flesh. Like there is some corporeal form, but yes. Um so you can punch it. Maybe. Depending on who you are. I'm sure the Hulk could probably punch it. Probably, yeah. Um, and yeah, it is in reality Earth 616, and it says, um, lead designer, Guild of Strange Science, which does not have a blue link, so I'm a bit confused about that. That's how strange it is, we don't know. Um, but the actual creator of it is, um, a writer called Al Anders. And, so, yeah, so what we just... want to talk about the Mask of Eternity? Like, what's brought this on? Well, it was just, like, someone mentioned that it exists and what it is, and I was like... You know what? With just like a one sentence summary, that sounds like a fun thing to just read through. And all we've got here is the history and the properties, and that's all it is. So it's okay. not particularly long wiki, but I just figured like, let's just go through it and see what happens. Well, that's the idea of Wiki Weekends, right? It's not always going to be mm-hmm. a subject that we're all familiar with. Exactly. Sometimes yeah. it's more about the discussion that arises as a result, sometimes about the information contained therein. And ultimately, it's about inspiring an interesting conversation. So when you do go to vote for which wiki won this week, that is the criteria. Mm-hmm. Of so, course, oh, yeah. Tell me more about the Mask of Eternity. Well, we'll dive straight into the history. The Eternity Mask was a magical item created by a group of renegade occultists from Eternity's own substance to make peasants the equals of Arthur's knights. So that is um, Arthur Pendragon, which I presume would be like... King Arthur. Just yeah. King Arthur, yeah, yeah. Knights of the Round King Table, dipshit. all that ja- jazz, yeah. So, yeah, you're talking about, like, going all the way back to Arthur's knights. Yeah, so you're back in Arthurian times, and it's like, hey, those, like, King Arthur's got swanning around England being a dickhead. And just, yeah, a bunch of just occultists managed to make a mask out of literal eternity. And, um, yeah, it just says, like, essentially, it is just to make peasants the equals of Arthur's knights, and that's as far as it gets into there. But See, I then, can already Carl, do that if I went back with a gun. I mean, that's true. I went back that's in time true. with a gun, and like Arthur's like, how dare you think you can sit at his table? I could just shoot him and go, oh, it's my table now. <laughs> and speaking of guns, it goes, like, you know, fast forward to a time where they did have guns, the mask eventually found its way to the USA, where it's said that Ben Franklin himself harnessed its magic to help win the American Revolutionary War, of course. <sighs> what is it about comic writers and thinking we're going to put our dumb comic bullshit into a real world event where people died. Yeah, and I guess it's one of those things where going all the way back to the Revolutionary Wars, what, like a couple hundred years ago where Yeah, so just, you probably be far enough back there where 
it's crass, but it's not offensive. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. And Arthurian times weren't real, so. Wait, what? Well, you know, it's like it's all myth, right? Like everything about the King Arthur and like the Knights, the Rights, all like been exaggerated to the point where it's not at all representative of like reality or history as we know it. So no, fuck it, yeah, go back and put some bullshit magic mask in there. Like there were Arthurian times though, right? There, there were, but like there was like, like dragons and shit. Yeah, everything that we talk about with the Knights of the Round. So I have to double check now. What was King Arthur a real dude? I bet like, like, I was like, I'm pretty sure, like, King Arthur existed, right? Like, I've just always assumed. I've never really looked into it. No, King Arthur um, is not certain how these legends originated or whether the figure was based on a real historical person. Oh, right, okay. No. So yeah. I was just thinking then, like, I'm pretty sure it is all bullshit, but then you were like, you made me question that that it's bullshit <laughs> for a second. Because you were like, well, no, it's based on a real... It's like, well, we have kings. Well, yeah, I, I assumed it was based on, like, real times and people and just, you know, the legends and shit had gotten exaggerated over time to a ridiculous extent. It's, you made me question myself. It's like, no, Arthurian times are all mythology. But, like, it's, right. asten- it's like Game of Thrones, where it's mm-hmm. set in, it's ostensibly set within just this nebulous part of history that we all kind of know, but everything that's happening is just complete bullshit. Right, okay. There was like magic swords and dragons and all that nonsense. Mm-hmm. Like you proper got me then. I was like, any of that was real, but I it's, assumed it's like it Robin was based on like a real guy. Well, I guess it's like Robin Hood, isn't it? Where like everyone always assumes that well, there must be some basis to the Robin Hood myth. Mm-hmm. Like maybe it's not like he ran around robbing the rich in like green tights. <laughs> yeah. but surely it was like a guy, right? And it's like apparently not now. Hmm. Like it's close. We've got is like a, a poem a hundred years after he was supposedly alive that mentions like robin of loxley or something right fair enough yeah. you really got me then i was like i it's I'm pretty sure like arthurian like... stuff's bullshit right it's even it's just yeah. setting that weird part of history that everyone knows about england of like well people rode on horses and stuff again like i always assumed like it was that a, there was some elements basis. were real and that it all just got like exaggerated and Mythologized over time, kind of thing. So like you say, like like Robin Hood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was always just my, I just okay, just assumption, and I'd never really looked into it or thought about it too much. But why would you? Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, just it says here the mask has been since passed on from individual to individual, and one of the first known users of the mask was Masked Raider. Is that Great. the Masked Rider? Is that Carmen Rider? <laughs> like, Did Carmen Rider come over Cal- here and put Carmen the mask on Rider's for a little just bit? Just like cousin, um, the descript man in mask. The Masked Rider is like just a, essentially a cowboy in the Mask of Eternity. Just like a really good, like, pistols. Yeah, it sounds like a really good um, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh character. Send me the picture. Let's have a look. Um, let's give let's this. a look at the Masked Rider. Raider or Rider? Raider. Raider, not like, Rider. No, is in like Vorse Raid from <coughs> Yu Gi Oh! Mm-hmm. 1900 attack points, baby. That was such a weird pull. And I, I like the fact that I didn't question it because, like, of course, you yeah. You know who I'm talking about. Oh, right? You know Vorse Raid I, is uh, right. Bear with us, video people. I've gone off the conversation to send Carl that picture, so bear with. There we go. Okay, that looks. The way that's drawn looks real bad. It does, but the that mask like of eternity. A, that looks like a photo that I get you like cancelled. The mask of eternity itself is essentially like a black mask that's essentially like the. It looks exactly like eternity does. Like it just looks like a manifestation of space. So yes. it's mostly black with some like sparkly elements on top and stuff. But it does look like just a white guy wearing blackface with a. Gun. It does. It does. It doesn't look great. Um, but the Master Raider was a legendary champion of the poor and oppressed. And after an armed, Hood. yeah, after an armed confrontation in 1880, he was badly wounded and left to die while bleeding out. Um, Doctor Matt Masters, who was the hero Black Rider in secret, found him lying on the ground and tried to help him by removing his mask. Masters inadvertently killed the vigilante. And after seriously reflecting on the the situation, Masters decides to put on the mask and carry on its legacy, intended to avenge the Masked Rider. So here's the thing, it's like it became a mantle that was passed down. Also, this thing can't be that powerful if the guy wearing it got shot. I am... 
I'm very confused as well because it says Mast Rider and Mast Raider. Yeah. So it does say on his Maybe page Mast Rider. Rider. <laughs> so that's the thing. Surely, not, the Black Rider sounds like what this guy should have been called. Mm-hmm. With like you know the just the face that just looks like you're staring into eternity. Yeah, and um, it kind of goes on here where like multiple different people throughout history, like during the Great Dep- Depression, he passed it on to Dennis Piper. Um, who used the master in his time as the operative in the 1930s? So it's like, was that mean like Ben Franklin was walking around in blackface killing people? Yeah, kind of. Mm-hmm. It's a mask, but you know, yeah. And um, there's one here where just then it goes into like fighting the Nazis. Um, <sighs> it says, when the three exes approached Piper, they claimed they needed it to fight the Nazis, and he immediately gave it to them. Um, Why not just like send him to do it? Did he not want to fight the Nazis? Well, apparently not. Okay. Not brave that's, enough, that's, maybe. That's but, suspect. Um, I'm fairly certain it was these people here. But uh, the three exes, I had a look into this earlier. Okay, are these like just three random dudes? Or are they someone who's like, are they important? Well, they are like... Um, Oh, it started out in the 1500s as a guild of warlocks that we, you know, used to overthrow King Arthur and give power back to the common people. So ultimately, like, these are the people who made the um, the Mask of Eternity in the first place. But, like... Okay, what, what does it do? Because it doesn't sound that powerful, considering one of the guys who wore it got shot by a cowboy. Yeah, that's the weird thing, is because it's... um. Basically, like, we'll go down to, like, the properties here. Yeah, because I want to know, because, like, how do you get shot wearing something that's created from, like, a fabric of existence? The literal fabric of existence strapped to your face. Yeah, because one of the two properties that it has is cosmic awareness. Well, how do you... You got shot! How aware can it make you? Because that's the thing is, like, the way that it, it got briefly explained when I heard about it was essentially, like, the it's the mask of narrative bullshit powers so you can just know basically just medium awareness yeah so it it sounds like it's a mask invented for the purpose of i want to give this mask to somebody that is not very powerful so that they can win but like it it doesn't sound it doesn't sound like it has any limits on its power but then at the same time just a guy got shot how do you get killed wearing it Mm-hmm. If, it, if it's supposed, last thing, if it's supposed to be that. How do you die wearing something that's like got this much like narrative nonsense attached to it? Because, um, yeah, power mimicry and cosmic awareness is what it gives you. So it says, whoever wears the mask is given power equal to anyone they may face, unless they are below the natural ability of the mask's user. So, like, obviously, it won't depower you, but it will power you up. So this, um. This allowed an untrained peasant to be on equal grounds with the Black Knight and fight him for three days straight, for example. Oh, so, okay, so it, it makes you equal to whoever you're facing. Yeah, so. it sounds like it always gives you a shot at winning a fight. To put you on even footing. Mm-hmm. So, and, and then one of the guys wearing it is still lost. I guess, like, but that's the point, right? Is that it always gives you a, a fighting chance, but it doesn't necessarily give you the power to win. In which case, it doesn't really sound much better than just giving someone a gun. You say that, but okay, that's so... like, oh, a, a peasant was able to fight the Black Knight. Cool. Um, but it does say, you know, if the user's intent was to commit acts of evil, the mask had no effect. But so far, the upper limits of its abilities have yet to been established. Because we, we and... don't know what happened if you want. Okay, I'm going to go fight the Hulk wearing this thing. And that's the thing, right? Is that, okay, beating the Black Knight. Black Knight's pretty powerful compared to a regular peasant on the streets, but that peasant could pick a fight with Hulk or Eternity or anyone and have a, a shot at winning the fight. You put them on even ground, but then you're on even ground, but the person who's got like the more power than you, who you're now equal with, has still got more skill at using it. So, I don't think that it's just power. It just says, like... You know, it does say here power equal, but I think the point of it is, like, it puts you to a point where you could win the fight. Okay. Like, so it 
it would probably give you the like natural abilities to be able to fight that person as well. See, it's interesting, and I like the idea of it for a um, narrative utility. Mm-hmm. But just the fact, like you said, one of the people where it died is really fucking funny to me. It's like you it literally is, yeah. could not have had a better chance to win. But you could have done because there could be a mask out there which was just like the boring mask. And we always talk about when things get overpowered and just like yes. the I win button is boring. And I really it, like the idea of the I might win button. Yeah, it's just that thing that I thought like, it must really suck right to know you're on Lixit. So, there's no Johns. <laughs> there are no Johns yeah, yeah. when you've got cosmic Johns. Yeah, exactly. But the other person was like, that's bullshit. Like you were talking about Elden Ring earlier. Like, that's mm-hmm. bullshit. That's not fair. Well, it's the most fair it could ever possibly be. There is literally <laughs> not a fairer thing. And the only deciding factor here is who wanted it more. And it was clearly the bad guy. Yeah, and I love the fact that... I mean, I, I don't really like the fact that um, it says, like, oh, you know, people using it for evil. Whatever. Fuck, just let anyone use it. Yeah. But I do love the fact that it's not that I'm going to win. It's the just... Oh well, we're always on equal footing here. Well, it's just it makes it so that there's no Johns that way. There's no excuse. Yeah. you've got no excuse for losing. Besides, you just sucked. The other guy wanted it more. And I, I, I kind of like that though because, okay, well, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go fight the Hulk, and it's like, okay, well, it's on you if you lose. Yeah. If you go if and you lose, lose to the Hulk lose with this bad. mask, like you, it's your fault. You lost. And I love the idea of like, yeah, not just writing something in the comics where it's like oh well this person's just got like you know the fucking infinity gun and wins regardless no it's like no it's just that they put themselves into a position where they can fight somebody of you know unlimited strength it's like well it's I an have interesting also premise it. like you said they've like oh it was designed for like king arthur is like well i should rule over england because of like my divine right and it's like well fuck you mm-hmm how about you go fuck yourself? Like, just because you've got power doesn't mean you've got the authority to wield it. Or just because you've, you're powerful doesn't mean you deserve. And, so, and I'm not sure how thing... evil King Arthur is in. Like, no, I don't uh, know too much. Because of... our myth and our legend always tells him being a very fair and just king. Mm-hmm. So I can't think of any, like, Arthurian legend or story that I'm aware of where King Arthur is portrayed as anything but the most noble motherfucker ever. Yeah, exactly. And... Presumably that must not be the case if, like, a group of people had to create a Mask of Eternity to overthrow King Arthur. I want to double check now. So King, King Arthur powers. I'm just going to go see, like, him in Marvel. I'll have a quick look up. Mm-hmm. While you keep going to yeah, mask. The, um, the idea of all of it, of just, like... Well, he can't have been great if just he's had this, like, weird cult create the Eternity Mask to, to dethrone him and kill all of him and his knights, but I I am wondering how the mask works when it comes to... King Arthur and Marvel must have some kind of, like, magic sword or armour or some bullshit like that, right? He's pretty strong, yeah. He's got the sword in the stone, right? Well, that's what I would presume, yeah. Yeah, he's got the sword in the stone and then, like, the Lady of the Lake and he's got Merlin on his side. So how would the mask work if that was the case of, like, well, does it make you as strong as Arthur, but then Arthur's got this, like, unlimited arsenal of weapons? I'm just, oh, I've got his, his power here, and it just says, like, he's got the sword of Excalibur. So he's got Excalibur, mm-hmm. like, the legendary sword. Yeah. So the sword... He's also got the sword of Peace Clarence, the spear of um, uh, Rongo Mayanid, the dagger of Carwenon, and the shield of uh, Wyprofugiak. Blah, blah. <laughs> I, I can't, Lucas, do you want to have a go pronouncing this word? I'm going to send it to you. So his shield is called. I'm going to, you want to go pronouncing this word, mate? Nope, nope, not even trying. <laughs> wow, what the fuck is that? Yeah, well, that's his weapon. So he's got like a legendary sword, a dagger, a spear, and a shield. And apparently, I'm just going to double check the shield. Okay, it's, this is shield. It's supposedly completely indestructible. Hmm. He yeah, doesn't mention uh... anything about him being evil. I mean, maybe just like, you know, it's one of those, really, of having a king in itself is inherently evil, right? Maybe, yeah, they just didn't like the idea of a king. It's like, okay, but but all I can see, even in Marvel, he seems to be a just and worthy king who rules with fairness. But he can't lift Mjolnir. 
it's one of those things of again as i say like just the idea of royalty of like one man living rich in a castle and ruling over everybody while there are people dying on the streets and you know everyone's got no money and there's peasants and shit like Mm -hmm. inherently just that system in itself and upholding that system is but that's why like king arthur's part of the legend right because he's the justest, most noble, legendary king of all. Like, he is the ideal to which all other kings should strive. Like, he is literally the idealized version of what a king should be. And yet, even in Marvel, there are people who want to overthrow him because, you know, he's still a dick in that sense. I, I guess so. Um, and it does say that the Eternity Mask has been implied to take a role in the most important events in human history, of course. It's just like, Hey, did anything important in history happen after Arthurian times? It's like, yeah, the mask was probably involved. Um, but it does say that the mask is capable of granting an awareness to the user that guides them or drives them, and to uh, or drives them to lead others to specific places so that an incoming crisis can be resolved. So it's like the cosmic awareness part of just it inherently pushes people with the mask to either themselves go solve a crisis or lead others to the crisis. Okay, so it like you know, it, it instills in you a sense of just cosmic justice. Like there's some bad shit going on and the mask compels you to right that wrong. Whether you're aware of it or not, yeah. It's um cuz it says granting an awareness to user that guides them or drives them. So yeah, maybe like it does instill like a, a sense of justice to you but it doesn't um, specifically say whether that's conscious or not. And no. Um, part of, you know, the, the history here going through back to this, like, there's a lot of bullshit that goes on. Um, but um, it, it mentions a person called Jerome Hamilton here, Carl. Okay, tell me about Jerome Hamilton. Because I, I looked through that article mm-hmm. on, like, Arthur... And just everything's like, yeah, there's a lot of bad shit that went on in Arthurian times, and he tried his damnness to help people. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, this is just great. Okay. In the sense of, like, just pure dumb comic book bullshit. It's like, oh no, like, you know, bad shit happened, and Hamilton got abandoned in some, like, debris um, in a rock slide and shit. And it's like, with okay. the last bit of strength, he found the Eternity Mask, which revitalized its first user in a, um, in a long time. Donning a costume, Hamilton then started calling himself Blind Justice. And Carl, he's a man with, like, the Justice Mask, and he is blind, okay. and he runs around in a suit calling himself Blind Justice. So and Daredevil just, like, was more subtle than that. Why? But why is Daredevil not called Blind Justice? Like... So why is Daredevil, is Daredevil not Daredevil. just called, like, just Crime Puncher? <laughs> it's like, I love the idea of someone, like, who's blind running around going, I'm blind, Justice. It's like, we talked not long ago about the Daredevil 2003 dreadful movie, and, yeah. like, one of the lines that they use that seemingly everyone in the court must have, like, sighed at is, like, Matt Murdock being his, like, Justice is blind. The thing is, I, like, I get that. And it's a really interesting concept. That's why I like Lady Liberty, right? I'm not sure what the mm-hmm. name of that traditional depiction of like Lady Justice is, but it's always a lady holding scales with um, the the blindfold, the blindfold on, right? Fold because on. Mm-hmm. Justice should be weighed on like you know the facts, not what you can see. You should only go on yeah, like, well, exactly. what, what you feel. And it's like it, should... it makes sense. It's a it's a good, neat visual, but. At least Marvel was subtle enough to make the blind lawyer superhero not use that line, except for in that sh- the shit film. Yeah. And I just love the idea of, like, blind justice running around and he's literally got the scales of justice on his chest and everything. It's like, oh, I love how just fucking cringy it's on the it nose, is. right? It's so bad and on the nose, but I love it. It's like, that's the kind of, like, clearly this was more... Silver Age time, maybe, like, dependent, you know, I'm not sure exactly, but, you know, it's definitely not a modern character from the looks of the uh, the drawing, but just, I love it, how bad some of the comic books were, where it's like, we got a guy that's got, like, I'd say, the, the Justice mask, and he's blind, what do we do? Like, call him Blind Justice, put the scales on his chest, it's going to be so hype. 
He's like there's that guy's like one of the first like gay superheroes in Marvel, and they just called him Rawhide. Right. Yeah. Or right. don't forget the he- don't forget the hemo goblin, who was like the vampire who gave you AIDS. Fuck. Should we talk about the hemo goblin one day? No. No. Can maybe we talk we about shouldn't. the hemo goblin. No. The AIDS vampire from Marvel when they try to make like a, an issue about AIDS. Dear God. Um, moving on. Moving on from moving that. On, just okay. like the last little bit here um, says, you know, Doctor Strange, um, he, got, he got the version of the mask worn by the mask ra- raider at the time of his death and took it to the Sanctum Santorum, which implies maybe there's more than one mask, but that doesn't matter. Um, Two people yeah, should wear say, it. Like, following Stranger's deaths, um, the mask was passed on to Blue Marvel. The Defenders were formed by Eternity to investigate a threat from outside the multiverse, and Blue Marvel then gave the mask to America Chavez so she could battle the Beyonder and the Phoenix. So if she's able to battle the Beyonder and the Phoenix, that thing's immeasurably powerful then. Because, like, it's kind of yeah. hilarious that... Do you think the guy... Because here's what you do, right? If it makes you as strong as the person you're fighting, what you do is you make friends with someone who's really, really fucking strong and always mm. have them stood directly behind the person you're fighting. But then you're not fighting that person, No, just right? pretend. Trick the, trick the mask. <laughs> just imagine like that guy who got shot by a cowboy who was like sticking up like a, a saloon. Feels like when he looks into the future as a ghost and just sees like America Chavez fighting the fucking Beyonder. <laughs> that's the thing great like how does it feel when you just got like shot in a duel and died wearing that mask and yeah America Chavez is punching the Phoenix Force like let's go Um, of course then you know Chavez passed the mask to a time displaced Loki of course who fixed her broken horn and summoned the Queen of Nethers with it what is I love Queen all these of random Nethers? bullshit words yeah and then Loki went back to his proper place in time, but without his memories, of course. And after course. regaining his memories, he took off the Eternity Mask from his horn. And it's like... Lucas, has Marvel what is gone going too far? On? Yeah. Like, I've not understood a word you've said for the past ten fucking minutes. Neither have I. But I, I just, like, I wanted to go through this because I was curious. But it's... All of this bullshit is to just kind of showcase the idea of, like, hey, this mask is bullshit. And but it can do it's bullshit the in a way wants. that feels fair. Because mm-hmm. that's the thing where it's off like the Infinity Gauntlet. Like, the common trend with a lot of like Marvel superheroes and media and stuff is just everything gets more powerful to the point it's ridiculous. Like, just look at Harley Quinn in DC. Yeah. And, like, she started as like, she's just the Joker's sidekick. She's basically his secretary. And yeah. now she's like fighting gods. Like, there's that episode, or not episode, there's that, you know, there's that issue of like, I don't know if it's canon anymore because DC's reset units four times. But there was like one DC comic where Catwoman beats three Flashes at once. Okay, yeah. sure, yeah, yeah. Because they can't help themselves but make the. They have to keep the power has to keep going up. Mm-hmm. The scale has and... to. Keep, the idea of an item that it does get more powerful, but you could be wearing it, go like just fucking knock the shit out of Galactus. And then trying to stop a random like robbery in a bodega in New York and get shot. Yeah, exactly. Your right. ass is going to get Uncle Ben, and there's nothing you can do about it. And I, I love the idea of just yeah. There's there's as I say, not the win button that you might win button. Of just yeah, you could. The, if I say, like that, the you Galactus. might win button. It's not the just, win button. It's the fact that you might be able to be Galactus. You've got a good shot. But Galactus also has an equal shot of defeating you. But that sounds pretty good if you were just yeah. random dude on the street, right? But here's the thing of, right? If you can say, here's a thing, and it'll let any random goober we grab off the street have a 50-50 chance against like Galactus, like you said. Yeah. That's better odds than no chance at all, right? It's, it's better than throwing fucking Spider-Man at Galactus, right? Yeah, it's that thing. Like, would you give that the chance, right? Yeah, so like, yeah, would you would. bet all of humanity on a coin flip? Well, if that's <laughs> is, if the odds are fifty fifty or zero percent, that's literally infinite percent more chance. Yeah, I am curious about like the idea of 
weaponry and stuff included in this of just well does the mask give you any weapons to help you or does it give you like powers that equate to the weapons that they have so that it's a balanced fight it's unclear or does it just give you the ability to like it's interesting it's certainly interesting but i think the fact we've not heard much about it is probably like you know yeah yeah it's an interesting concept which is why i just wanted to keep it to like a podcast episode because i figured there's like it's a unique idea but it's one that hasn't got like much bones to it from the looks of it I just feel bad for, like, you know, King Arthur. Like, as I went through his wiki page, I couldn't really find anything. <laughs> but, as I say, to somebody who is a peasant on the street, seeing King Arthur just roaming around and living kingly life is probably like, hey, look at that dickhead. <laughs> we'll it's probably not well. the best. The fact that just this random peasant... Like, what does King Arthur think when just a random peasant wearing a fabric mask walks in and kicks the fuck out of his greatest <laughs> champion? It's like, well, you should be my champion, right? I do wonder as well, like, if one person wore the mask and beat all nine knights of the round table or whatever... Presumably, if they try to attack you, right? Well, yeah, but if each fight is a coin flip and they manage to, like... You know, well, yeah, do like, like a boss run. Let's see. Okay, like, so how many? Let's double check. How many knights of the round are there? Yeah, I don't know if it is nine knights or whether that just sounds right. Maybe there's a more or less. I don't know. Final Fantasy Seven should be able to tell us, right? Yeah, yeah you double check and I'll, we'll do the math. Because I say like, someone's gonna say, "Well, you just times this by this by this." It's like, well, yeah, I'm, not, do, I'm be... not doing math off the cuff. Especially like point this five kind of times point five times yeah. point five times point five. Yeah. yeah so yeah. It's how many are there? Um. So, um, knights of the round table. Oh, for fuck's sake, ads on <laughs> fandom. Fuck off. <laughs> the knights of the round table fandom. Um. So members, members okay. of the knights. Fuck off, Final Fantasy adverts. We don't want. We talked about Final Fantasy before. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay, the only thing it comes up with is, like, the leader is King Arthur. Yeah, so that's one. And then it says former members. Okay, so, so let's, let's count one. Uh, Bors, Galahad, Gareth, Sir Malcolm, Gawain, Kay, Lancelot, Mogard, Sir Tristan, uh, Kai here the Tall, the Florid something, the Magpie Knight, um, Sir Bedwer. A Pathia of the Middle Path, Men with the Shifter, and the Grim Huntress. That's 17. Fuck. Okay. So, okay, so, so you've got to beat them. So it's, it's, you've got to beat 17 50 50 flips in a row, which is really unlikely. So let's try that. So 0.5 times 0.5. <laughs> so that's one. Unk. Times 0.5. That's three. Times 0.5. Okay. That's four. Times 0.5. I don't want to say anything because I don't want Carl to lose track. What is it? No, I just don't want you to lose track of how many times you've done it, that's all. But uh, if you think you can, it's like, that's the thing. Just, you know, anyone who's got like a coin or something that's listening, you try and get the same result 17 times on the bounce. Just try and do that now while Carl's figuring this out. I'm just going to double check my math now just to make sure I got it right because I don't like the calculation wrong. Mm Mm-hmm. It should just be 0.5 times 0.5 over and over. Yep. Um, so it's roughly 0.00763%. So one one hundredth of a percent of a chance that you'd guess all, you'd get all 50 50 coin flips in a row. So it's no wonder people who wear this shit don't survive that long. Because <laughs> the odds of like winning the coin flip three, four times in a row is already like. It's already less pretty than 10%. low. Because if people don't know, like. Um, the odds of winning, a, like guessing a coin flip correctly, just three times in a row, is like already starting to get like almost comically unlikely to do it seventeen times in a row. Well, yeah, it would already be like a three times on the bounce would be like a one in eight, so only yeah. one eighth of the time you're getting it right. But yeah, but it's, it's roughly like one in a million, give or take. So I am wondering, like. If uh, we do it the other way around, just to give people a better idea of like 
I think maybe fractions is probably a better way to like figure that out for people. Also, I said like, I did like the rough calculate. It's about about one in a million. Right. Yeah. Give or take. Um, and you just like as a demonstration, just when you get to like ten times, it's already like one in a thousand, and then you've got yeah. to double that another like seven times. It's just really, really hilarious. Like the fact that anyone survived for like more than three or four encounters is impressive, I suppose. But so it's still better odds. Like even like one yeah. in a million odds is still better than like you know an unarmed peasant walking into King Arthur's court will probably get slaughtered in four seconds. <laughs> I'm sure anyone would rather take the one in a million. Like, do you want the one in a million chance or do you want the one in zero chance? Um, and I think, as far as I can tell, it is if I've done my like the thing right, the fraction would be one over. 262,144, I think. So, yeah. One in 260,000 chance. That's, that's still better than zero. And you've got to then do... You've got to kill Arthur at the end of it. Yeah. It's that thing, so isn't I'd, it? It's the joke, one isn't in half it? Like, a million. See, there's a chance. <laughs> but that's the thing. You've got a chance. You've got a chance. It Whereas... literally always gives you a chance. So if you made, like, random chuckle foot go fight Galactus, they literally have no chance. With this mask on, they have 50-50. And if mm -hmm. he has, like, he just so happens to have 17 silver surfers, it's one in a million. <laughs> that's still better than no chance. Exactly. That's better than the chance that you would have it without the mask. Without the mask. And it's just, yeah, it's a, a great idea to me of just, like, oh, well, you're always going to have a shot, which is better than nothing. And um, yeah, that's just. So I the, think it's the always worth concept. taking your shot, right? Yeah, I just love the simple concept of it. Of like, yeah, you've got a chance, and that's all we're gonna do. Because like the we talk over and over again about comic book writers that just can't help themselves make things like yeah. ridiculously overpowered all the time. And like for once, someone showed a little bit of restraint. <laughs> they did. Maybe they showed too much restraint because <laughs> that like it'd be very hard. I feel to give a really rousing heroic speech where it's like, and you know what? They said we couldn't stand up to this threat, but I guarantee you we've got at least a 50% chance of succeeding. We statistically have a 50-50 chance of succeeding. It's not quite like, you know, we will cancel the apocalypse, right? <laughs> but the thing is, right, it's like... If somebody wearing the Eternity Mask, if you just line up a bunch of goobers... <laughs> just, keep just, get, just as soon as you lose, like, you're about to lose the fight, you know you've lost that fight against Galactus, just throw the, the mask. mask to the next person down the line. <laughs> now what you do is you put the mask on a gun, and then you shoot them with the gun, and then just keep shooting, because it's a 50-50 chance of winning every time you pull the trigger. So eventually, <laughs> if you pull it 17 times in a row, you're like, it's, it's like basically a, it's guaranteed to happen. I don't know if uh, guns can wear the eternity mask or not. Who knows? Put it, on, put it on. Put it on a bee's nest, and throw the bee's nest at Galactus. Then all the bees have a chance. You got little like eternity bees. But that means that the bees don't have a chance. It's that the bee's nest has a fifty percent chance of knocking Galactus out when it hits yeah. it. Each bee. They just make little mini masks. Yeah. Can you like chop up the mask? Yeah, make mini put, masks it... out of it, and then what just put it on a million bees. Yeah, you chop it up. It's like you know, get as many as you can, and what you do is you get Ant Man, <laughs> and you get everyone to have pin particles, and get like a squad of like thirty people. And you could particles. do the thing as well, where you make the mask real big, with like Ant Man can throw one a little disc to like enlarge the mask, and then what you, you, do cut is you put it, it up all, into put many it masks. all the way over Earth, and then every alien who tries to take over us <laughs> just dies. 50% of the time. Yeah. What happens when the, the, the Earth loses that coin flip? It's like the Earth just explodes. It just explodes. Yeah. Oh. And that's the thing. It, I think it's a, a way better idea than seemingly what it's been used for in a lot of the comics. So it sounds cool as fuck when it's like, oh, fuck, America Chavez is just punching the shit out beyond her and the Phoenix. Yeah. You should do more stuff like that where it is just, as we say, 
find a random guy on the street and go make him fight Galactus and see what happens. <laughs> Just, I'd pay to watch that. <laughs> That's, like, that'd be a great TV show, right? Because um, In the oh, Marvel oh, Universe of like, can you beat... Joy, are you smarter than a 10-year-old? It's like, can you beat Galactus? <laughs> it's... Um, I can't remember the name of the person that sets up like the the tournament, but like the battle master person that like oh just I think it might be for Secret Wars or whatever. Um just teleports them all into like a big tournament and stuff. It's like, Oh yeah, so you're supposed to fight, right? Or like yeah, or the Grandmaster. You know, the Grandmaster Something at like the Coliseum it. is just like brings people in. And it's just like, can you defeat the 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 masked raider rider? And it's, it's just we talked guy. about a tournament of power earlier, right? It's yeah. like, oh, we're gonna do a tournament of power. Just like, we'll just fucking just send anyone. Send Jeff from accounting with the mask on. <laughs> He's at least a fifty fifty chance. Is he got a fifty percent chance of killing Zeno? Yeah. <laughs> just stop him destroying the universe. But he's gonna win, right? And ultimately, that's what you could do: is you could send in, like Poir. With the Eternity Mask to just be like, and can you go like, kill you know. Zeno? Zeno wants to destroy the universe. Can you stop Zeno and just throw Poir with the Eternity Mask? Well, the thing is, if you put the mask on, you're like, maybe. Yeah. Maybe I could. It would make the you as powerful confidence. as Zeno. Or here's what you do is like, you talk about it being really, really powerful. Mm-hmm. And then you, you convince the villain to try and steal it off you so they put it on. So then they think they're really powerful. And then everyone they fight will have a 50-50 chance of beating them. No, because it does say that it doesn't depower people. It can't depower you. It can only make you it, stronger. So it, it can't bring people's power level down, okay. but it can bring people's power level up. So it's it's like the underdog mask. Right, put it it can't... <laughs> put it on a dog. Can you imagine if you put it on a dog? Can you imagine how, like, imagine, how, imagine how much flower Cade could steal if he wore it? Because, like, you know, Joey's only got little legs. And, like, he's, like, his, his opponent is a desk that's taller than he is. Would he just grow, like, really long legs? Like, whoop. Maybe. Can you imagine he becomes that? one of those electric desks that, like, rises up. Yeah. Like, you just walk into your room and you just see him hovering. You're like, oh, no. He's learned. Let's imagine how powerful he'd be. Joey, like play wrestle with like Cade. Imagine if he had the mask on and now he's as powerful as you are. <laughs> he's just like wrestling with a fucking alligator. Like he does like the death roll and just takes oh, him with no. him. You're like, no! <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. But yes, we were... We have spent long enough talking about what we could do with the mask on. I think it's a good time to leave it there. But yeah, right. if you've enjoyed us talking about the cosmic mask, that is the Eternity Mask... I forgot its name for a second, but just let's move on. It's a weird name, um, right? Th- yeah, the Eternity Mask is, but, you know, if you've enjoyed that, then you can give a good old vote for my wiki winning this week. I think yours is pretty good. Discord. It, it, it started weird, but then like we started coming with all the bullshit things you could probably do with it. I'm like, okay, I'm on with it. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. I am down with just throwing it over a bike, some bees. <laughs> and throwing the bees at Galactus and like fight these bees, Galactus. So I could fight some bees. I do oh, like God, your idea of the ants with Ant Man. Yeah, little people. Because you might say, well, how would you do it with a mask that was from in- to in- eternity? Easy. I don't know. So they it, made it, it looks like it's just a mask. It. Yeah, it needs you a bit of custom, Yeah, that's right? the thing. Just some some random occultists made it. Why can't you? Or just ask them to make some more. Oh, you do you put it over instead of putting it over your face, put it over your fist. And just punch people with it. Like I said, just put it over a gun. <laughs> the masked gun. The masked Can you imagine oh. that? That'd be a great villain, the masked gun. <laughs> it's a 50 50 oh, chance of hitting anybody. It is. And yeah, I guess in the comments let us know like what you would put the mask on. Yeah, what Shoot item would you put it on? <laughs> the, the 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 funny thing is, it doesn't matter what answer you give; they still haven't got a fifty percent chance of winning. <laughs> yeah, doesn't matter, right? Anything you could put it on would have a chance of winning. It's fifty fifty. Yeah, it's perfect odds. Because I think, by definition, there's no way you could put the odds in your favour. But I'd love to try and like figure out a way to do that. To bullshit it, yeah, yeah. 
So like, even though it by it is by definition only going to give you a 50-50 chance, how could you bullshit it? Because I, I would love to see as well, just if you could put the mask on an ant, like what does it do to the ant to give it a chance of being Galactus? I don't know. Like what, what happens to the ant? Oh, that's it a must fight get I some sort see. of power, right? I guess we'll find out. Well, it gets a power up, yeah. It just it's ill defined because How do we power ultimately up an ant? you can't define how the power up is given because then that would like you know cause loopholes and shit so yeah either way yeah let us know in the comments what you'd give the mask to <laughs> i'd turn it inside out you should... i'd put the mask on the mask from the mask I'd, I'd, I'd turn it inside out <laughs> let's see what happens like what happens if you put the mask on the mask what happens if you don't do that thing where you put over it. a table <laughs> like, do you like, like um, uh, a tablecloth you put over the table and have a table is the most powerful thing in the universe we'll so do you like out. you've always got like a chance of like fucking like whacking your your shin on a table mm-hmm. if you whack your shin on a table that's got this over it as a tablecloth is it a 50% chance that she like falls off <laughs> I want to know the logistics now because like these are the questions yeah. I want answered but the comics wouldn't do it mm-hmm. it wouldn't indeed but yeah thank you all for listening I hope you've all enjoyed the journey that we've been on today. Oh, thank you, everybody. Bye, all.